On this next video, we're going to be talking to uh, Malcolm, a Pontine stroke survivor. He's had um, only one big stroke, as you'll see, and he's had several heart attacks. And one of the things that we did for his therapy, other than control his blood sugars and control his blood pressure, also pay close attention to his lipids, but we also started him on an SSRI, as many of our patients are, serotonin reuptake inhibitors or antidepressants. And there's a lot of good literature that shows dramatic recovery in patients that are on SSRIs compared to those who just have physiotherapy without SSRIs. That and his extreme motivation and, um, and willingness to cooperate made a tremendous difference, as you'll see. Hi, Malcolm. Uh, thanks for coming in today for um, your clinic appointment. It's all right, Dr. Kaplan? Yes. No so, so you had a stroke, is that right? I had a stroke uh, back in May 2020, and uh, just after I had painted my, my daughter's office, just didn't feel right. And I ended up in uh, Thames Hospital, transferred to Waikato, to uh, five, I think it was, room four. Then to five, back to four, and I have nothing better to say for the attention that was given me. I appreciate that, Dal. No problems. When you had your stroke, could you uh, move your left arm at all? When I had my stroke, I, I could for a while, but then my left arm, my left leg, everything on the left hand side was really useless. And uh, we found out through a thing called brain stem uh, stroke. Right, a brain stem stroke. Brain stem stroke. And it was just through general, um, the physio, uh, that I am like I am now. I can actually walk with a walking stick. Um, the, um, the attention to detail and to each patient, fantastic. And what, and what kind of medications? What, what, what are the things that you remember we were really concerned about? I think uh, you were concerned, because I was a diabetic as well, Right. concerned about my blood sugar right. we were and my blood pressure. Blood pressure, right. We had to get that under good control. Which eventually was under control. It was too good. You know, in the middle of the night, I'd get a, I'd get a, jelly, I'd get a jelly bean or a ham sandwich, you know, oh, oh, to build my... Sugar. Yes, to build up my yeah. uh, blood sugars. Yeah, but your blood sugar was out of control when you That's came correct. to hospital. That's correct. That's and correct. That's correct. And besides the stroke, you've had a few heart attacks. I've had uh, a couple of heart attacks back in the early 20s, um, which was no fun. But uh, other than that... And you're 68? 67. 67. 67. So people that have heart attacks and strokes is really the same kind of disease as the problem with the small blood Well, it, it is. It really is. The only difference is after a heart attack, they fix you up and you're gone. You're home after a week or two with a stroke. It's very debilitating. And uh, I was here in Waikato for six weeks. And now, you remember when... Um, I saw you at first. You couldn't move your left hand. That's uh, correct. Can you tell us about the first time you moved your finger, that's, that's how, how we reacted? Well, your reaction really sealed it for me. I only could move my fingers like this, and you yourself coming through on the uh, in the wards to see your patients, you were so excited, I thought you were going to do a backflip. Yeah. But now, I can move everything now. And you can touch your little fingers? I can touch all my fingers. Touch all your fingers. And remember, fingers. remember before you couldn't even pick your arm up to touch That's your correct. chest? That's correct. That's correct. What was one of the things I gave you as a goal to touch? I wanted you well, to touch Well, the, the goal to touch to get me out of here was touch your head. Now look at that. You can touch your head. You can touch my head. Fantastic. So you made fantastic recovery. Exactly. And to get out of here, I actually lifted my hand up with my right hand. Now I just do it every day, just naturally all those beautiful locks of hair. <laughs> so you're okay if we use this on a YouTube video? No, no problem. Are you also okay if we show them a quick uh, video of your brain stem stroke? No, you can do that. Oh, thanks well, a lot. Whose brain is it? My brain. At least I got one. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay, thanks no, a lot. No problems at all, Dr. Kaplan. Okay. So Malcolm, you're okay if I show people the MRI of your brain? No worries at all, Dr. Okay. Kaplan. All right, good. So let's just point out a little bit of the brain stem. So here's part of the brainstem, we can see that these two sides here are both dark. They both pretty much look the same. And that's pretty much normal. And if we go down a little bit more on your brainstem, that's up, we go down a little bit more, all of a sudden we're starting to see on this right side over here a little bit of a white area. Yeah. That's where you had the stroke. We'll go a little bit more and we can see that this brainstem in the ponds was really quite big because here this is a dark side and there's a big 
white mark over there. This area on the right side affected the whole left side of your body. And you can see over here, again, it's light. And over on this side, the left side, it's dark. So it was a very big stroke. It's a small stroke compared to the total part of the brain. But being in the brain stem, that's a very critical area where all the information goes through to your spinal cord, leaving this big white section or the stroke. Okay. Well, I appreciate that very much. And I think this is going to be very helpful. People can see normal side both sides and then you just go a little bit down and then you see one side on the right is really ischemic a big stroke as opposed to the left side thanks again in conclusion we can see not only did he make a tremendous recovery for his left upper extremity but he's walking independently now where before he lost complete use of his left arm and leg he also had swallowing problems which is no longer an issue so we can find that the close management of a patient, not just medically, but a good interdisciplinary team where the physician works with the physiotherapist, uses medications properly and controls blood pressure, lipids, and um, uses other alternative methods such as perhaps SSRIs, makes a tremendous difference. These are just a few examples that you've seen on this video and in past videos. Thanks again for tuning.